So with our regular season finally ending, we end the year under 500, five and seven on the year. We end up hitting our target win goal, which is a plus, you know, we didn't overachieve, we didn't underachieve. We were borderline just right in the middle. And I feel like that's not that bad. Uh, you know, conference championship week, we're, de we're not in the conference. And then moving on to bowl week, we're not bowl eligible. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the bowl week just to see who won what awards on our squad. And then we're gonna take that. Moving to the final, uh, you know what I mean, end of the season. Look at the final stats to head into the off season, then the preseason, and we'll be done. So a lot of you guys thought, <laughs> so a lot of you guys thought we would only win about three to four games. So ha, we fooled you. <laughs> we won a uh, five, you know I me. Mean? We uh, we hit our target win goal. Some of the games we won, I guess you could say we didn't really, you didn't really think we were gonna win. Like us blowing out North Carolina the second to last week of the season was definitely not in the cards. I thought we would beat BYU more than we would beat uh, North Carolina, but turnovers just really came to haunt us. We're not a team good enough to overcome turnovers. We nearly did, but in the end it was just too much, man. So uh, we put up some pretty big numbers though, I, I'd say, you know, I know for the fact, for a fact, Tom broke some records. Isaac broke a record. Our defense played okay. Just eager to see, uh, you know what I mean, uh, who did what exactly. So here we are, end of the year stats. Uh, Texas A&M quarterback Jason Baker wins the Heisman by a landslide. Wasn't even close. You see here our boy, Shuffle God Isaac Johnson, won the returner of the year. We're going to go ahead and add that. And that was all we won there. Um, checking to see if we had any All-Americans on the year. We did not. Our returner of the year wasn't even a first team All American, but he did make second team All American. That's the only one there. Then we, we, our quarterback, Tom, was a freshman All American, and that's the only person we have there. Moving on to our conference, the All Independence team. Uh, it's only like two of us here in the conference, so you know what I mean? Of course, we're going to have a bunch of people there, two or three of us, me, us, Army, and UMass. So that's not really anything to really hang our hat on. Taking a look at some of the key bowl games. We actually have a SEC uh, National Championship. Bama taking on Mississippi State. Nobody really seen that coming. Uh, it's a two-loss school, which means everybody was beat up on all year. Alabama probably easily wins that game. The Orange Bowl, Boston College versus Stanford. To the Sugar Bowl, Kansas State versus Boise State. The Fiesta Bowl, Oklahoma versus uh, Cincinnati, surprisingly. The Rose Bowl, Michigan versus Oregon State, who went 11-2. and and uh, yeah, that's pretty much the big matchups there. So we're at the end of the bowl season, looking at the records that were set here by the squad. Isaac Johnson breaks the school receiving record with 15 in a year. Tom breaks the uh, school the school passing touchdown record with 34. He also breaks the school passing yards record with 3,645. And uh, that's not bad. We're gonna go over here now and take a, a first, first. <laughs> All right, so now we're, here we are. Of course, Bama won the national championship. Didn't really expect them not to win. <laughs> The score was 34-24, so Mississippi State put up a better fight than expected. Looking at our last, uh, end of the year stats here, how we fared, Tom was third in passing. We were nowhere near anywhere in rushing. Isaac was fifth in receiving. Uh, we had four players that led the nation in tackling. Sean Brown led the squad with 60. Sack leaders were nowhere to be found. Um, you know, that matters. And then picks, we only had three in the year. So final stats for Tom, 209 for 354. 36-45 through the air, 34 touchdowns to 23 picks. I mean, it's a plus 11, you know what I mean? Uh, touchdown to turnover ratio, but God, we got to get those down. 303 yards a game, six, almost 60% completion percentage, 18, uh, 17 yards per completion, 76 is longest of the year, sacked 27 times. On the ground, he almost ran for 800, for 750 yards, more so. Five yards a carry, 13 touchdowns, book 72 for 30, 319, seven touchdowns, Stinson, 26 for 189 with three touchdowns. Receiving Isaac, 59 catches, 1,232 yards, 15 TDs. Rob Owens, 43 catches, 76. I mean, 716 for nine touchdowns. Boykin, 40, 40 catches, 816 yards, five touchdowns. Booker chipped in with 20 catches. Smallwood had 19 for 332, three touchdowns. Perv Donaldson, 15 for 236 and two touchdowns. Defensively, Sean had 63 total tackles, 60 uh, were solo. Led the squad in tackles, one sack. Kirby had 57, 53 solo. Marcus Brown, 51, 48 solo. Stowe had 49 tackles. Total, all of them were solo. Troy King, 34 all solo. 31 all solo for uh, for Tevin Williams. June Brown had 27, 26 for solo. Uh, tackles for loss leader, Kirby Jones and Albert Stowe, the two linebackers on the squad coming back next year as well. 13 and 11. Who led the squad in sacks? Kerry Dupree with four. Deion Norris with three. 
Uh, interception leader was Marcus Brown. Then we had three tied with two, Sean Brown, Tevin Williams, and then Kirby Jones. Our, uh, our number one receiver, uh, corner man, he only had one one pick. We pretty pretty sure we had a bunch of drop picks though. Marcus Brown led the nation, <laughs> led his team in, in drop picks with six. Tev three, June and Kirby with two, and then we had a, a bunch with one. Had a few forced fumbles, just two in a year. Devin, uh, Devin Sing Douglas and Sean Brown. Two fumble recoveries, Isaac Johnson and Albert Stowe. Isaacs must have been on like a muff punt or something like that. And we did get the one safety against North Carolina. Now that we just went over the stats, let's go ahead and head into the offseason and see if we can get these recruits that we've been, you know, pretty much pitching to all season long. Okay, so we hit our target wins for the season with five. So for the next season, it's going up to six. They want us to steadily improve every year. Right now, our prestige is a C. Our job security is safe because we hit our goal. Hopefully, we can get over 500 next year, even though we won't be eligible for a bowl win. So we won't be losing anybody to the draft, as one would imagine. Uh, we're losing Stinson, Rob, Tillman, uh, Douglas, Boykin, June Brown, Purvis Donaldson, Tevin Williams, and uh, Jamal Bridges. We're also going to be losing Calvin Meyer. We're also going to be losing Calvin Meyer, you know what I mean, uh, to transfer to Western Kentucky. Playing time, go do your thing, big dog. Also losing Dustin Dow, Kyle Harvey, Demetrius Hill, and uh, Jamara Struggs. But, you know, these two dudes are 50, so they won't be missed. Taking a look at transfer up. Uh, Take a look at transfer requests here. This is huge. We got a 73 overall freshman uh, corner. Justin Wallace wants to come to the squad. Take a look at his stats. 91 speed, 91 excel. Good man in zone coverage. His press, you know, pretty decent. Uh, 80 play rack. What else do we have here? 86 stamina, 81 jumping. 5'11", 162. We got 68 overall right end that wants to come here. Justin Wilson uh, from uh, Marshall University. We could definitely use this help. And then we got a 74 overall tight end, 6'4", 220. Where is he from? Notre Dame, Jeremiah Stevens, 82 speed, 85 excel, 84 catch, 84 catch in traffic, 81 route running, uh, 82 release, pass and run blocker decent. He's more of a receiving tight end for sure. But, you know, you know with our offense, that's huge. So, yes, we're going to go ahead and accept all these transfer requests. So if that answered anybody's question, could we accept transfers? You're damn right. Okay, guys. So we just got four people left here on our board. Somehow we've uh, we've we've fallen out of first place with three out of four of them. John John Fields is staying loyal, man. He wants to continue to come to the squad. We're gonna go ahead and add all these add points to all these dudes. Remember, we cannot scout them until after you know they have committed to the squad. So that's definitely working against us. But nonetheless, man, I feel like we can get at least three out of four of these dudes. Um. I'm eager to see what they're going to be once we scout them. Uh, Jesse Summers, I feel like it's going to be a gym. 59170, he better be, man. I mean, but we, we need D-backs. We, we got a few that just left us this year, uh, this offseason. Dan Hill, middle linebacker. Uh, he'll be taking Kirby's, Kirby in a stealth spot once they leave after this next season. He can be huge as well out of Florida. Um, and don't, don't worry. Once we get to the preseason, we set up our recruiting boards. We are going to revisit... You know, the recruiting rules for for year number two. I don't expect you guys to just remember that off the top of your head or anything like that. So this is how we're going to do it, man. We're going to give 3200 to Gene Ruffin, 2500 to Dan Hill, 2500 to J Jesse uh, Summers, and then 1800 to John Fields. Hopefully, we can get all four dudes to come to the squad. Okay, guys, National Signing Day is here, and we were only able to get two of the four recruits, but they are really good. Jesse Summers and John Fields, they end up being 73 overalls, you know, as three stars, not JUCOs. They're from high school, so, you know, nice little uh, nice little gym territory there. Well, we don't, we don't get all 10. We don't use all 10 scholarships. We only get eight players. Let's see how we top, you know, as far as top classes in the nation. We have... The second to last, you know what I mean, recruiting class, uh, we got eight three stars. Still all pretty good players, man. I mean, nothing to write home about, but for our squad, it's definitely going to improve us a lot. All right, guys, so it's that time of the year again. We're looking for subscriber recruits. These recruits that you see on the screen are the people that need to be replaced. We got Jay Fields, D. Harrison, M. Young, J. Brown, C. Lyles, B. Johnson, T. Foster and J. Summers. Now the rules are staying the same for how we're going to do the um, subscriber recruits, except for one thing. I'm going to randomly select the players that uh, replace which recruit. 
So you know, I'm not going to do no. I'm no longer going to do first come first serve. I have way too many subscribers now to do that and to make it fair. You know, I'm going to randomly go into the. You know, I'm going to go into the random uh, YouTube comments uh, picker and I'm gonna pick you guys from there. But one thing I do need to reiterate that you guys do have to indeed be subscribers. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, you want a chance to be a recruit, go ahead and do that now. But I'm going to check. I'm going to go into my subscriber list and see if you guys are actually subscribers. So now that we got all of that out of the way, here's the information that I need from you guys. All right, so what I need from you guys, I need your first name and your last name. Give me your preference and jersey number. You will get it if it's available. I'm not going to move a bunch of numbers around and make sure you get that number. You know, skin tone, that being light, medium, or dark. There's only three skin tones in the game. And then last but not least, as you guys should know by now, because a lot of you guys asked, the YT will be added to the end of your last name. That way we can easily identify you. So guys like Evan Wilson, you see Wilson YT, you see Pine YT, and past you see like Smoker YT and Graham YT. Though all those guys in these series with the YT at the end of their name are subscriber recruits. I urge you guys, you know, you, and you guys are allowed to put more than one comment in, you know, to, uh, to, to try to get selected. But um, it should be fun, and I uh, can't wait to see who replaces who. Okay, guys, so here we are, position changes. We have our recruits, and you see here two of the best now, two of the best players on the squad are two freshmen. They're gonna come in here and make noise right away. We have the one athlete, John Fields. Um, if I remember correctly, he's gonna play the defensive side of the ball, which is where we need him most. He's a 78 running back. Uh, let's see, 92 speed. Hmm. We might even be able to use him more on the offensive side of the ball because Booker is our main man and all that, man. But he, he's just not fast enough. So, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use John Fields at running back. He's not going to train, but he's going to be he's going to be the starter. 92 speed, 89 excel. Maybe even might play both sides of the balls of the ball. You never know. And then here, the quarterback position is our best corner on the squad. Is a 73 year old, 73 overall true freshman. Um, these other dudes will train, except for Lyles, but he will get on the field day one. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the other positions. Quarterback staying the same. We didn't bring anybody anybody new in there. Uh, we need a fullback, so let's go ahead and make one of these running backs a fullback. Let's see who's the biggest dude. Everybody's like five nine. I think we might go ahead and put Nah Booker a spell. So we'll go ahead and make these two dudes right here fullbacks we'll just have three three running backs that way you know for the next few years we won't need to add a fullback to the squad here's the wide receivers uh Isaac's coming back with Smallwood and we got true freshman Drew Harrison coming through you know what I mean second fastest on the squad immediately uh tight end we got Jeremiah Stevens who won't be eligible to play this year but we got Willie Bridges who's going to step into the starting role uh left tackles still need still need help on the offensive line big time uh, it doesn't really get any better there. Um, our line is bad, and it showed last season. You see here, we got two new left ends coming into the squad. We got the same right ends we had. I'm not sure if we need any D tacklers or not. No, we're good in that position. Let's see if any of these dudes will be a decent offense alignment. I doubt it, but you know what I mean? It's, 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 worth, it's worth a look. Not at all. We'll just move one of these dudes over to the left end position. So that way we got four right ends, four left ends. We're even there. Left outside linebacker, some are all coming back for a senior year to start. Kirby Jones holding it down. That middle linebacker still, still, still holding it down. The right outside linebacker. We got our corners. We're young. We got three freshmen coming into play here. You know, two are red shirts, one are, one are, one are true freshmen, but it is what it is. Marcus and Sean still holding it down in the backfield. Rick coming through. And then we got Troy's probably going to, you know, play a little bit of nickel corner. Shibangu and the Roscoe are kicker and punters. We're good there. So, ready to move on. Okay, so here we are. Training results are in. Our boy Booker, plus five. But, he's, you know, he's still not going to see the still not gonna see the field. So, we're going to go position by position. Tomp goes up plus five. He is one to speed, one to excel. Let's see what, 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 what happened with his passing. Plus one power, plus one, at, plus three accuracy. That should definitely help. Um, let's go. Let's see here. Fullbacks, they went up plus three and plus four. Our boy Isaac Johnson goes up plus five. You know, our boy Isaac Johnson goes up plus five overall, plus two speed, plus three excel. This catch and go up at all, plus four catch, plus three special spec catch, plus three catch and traffic, plus three route running. That's a good look. Tight end Jeremiah Stevens plus four, Willie Bridges plus four. 
left left tackles, uh, I mean, our offensive line. Now we got some 60s and 70s in there, not, not just a bunch of 50s and everything. One of our left ends uh, trained, one of our right ends trained, or well, all of our right ends trained, uh, all of our D tackles trained. Summerall's plus three, Kirby plus four, Stowe plus five. They definitely earned it last year. Our corners go up plus four, plus five, plus five. The Brown brothers go up plus five and plus four. Troy goes up plus four. Our kicker goes up plus three. Punter plus th plus four. Let's go. Now, right here, I, as expected, I didn't really expect us to have to, you know, cut anybody. We're actually six under the roster size. Doesn't look like we have any uh, walk-ons. Okay, a lot. There's a walk-on. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and uh, get rid of all the walk-ons because we can only have the freshmen that we actually recruited come through. Let's see, is this another walk? No, it's not a walk-on. So we only had the one walk-on. They had they tried to throw one there at the, uh, at the running back position. So we're under we're under I mean under players there. Custom conferences. We still have yet to get you know an invitation to another conference. Probably you know if we get a winning record and everything like that, we'll see what they want to do. All right, guys, here we are officially in the preseason. First, we're going to set up our recruiting board. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at this season's recruiting restrictions. Okay, guys, here we are. So year number two, we, we move up from 10 scholarships to 15. We can now recruit in-state four-star and under players. And we can now recruit three-star and under players from out of state. So, you know what I mean? Things are looking up for us, man. We You know, we're, we're also – I don't remember – if I remember correctly, we still aren't able to scout them until they come on a squad. I'll go back to the first video and uh, listen and just to be sure, but we're not going to scout them just in case that is the rule. All right, guys, so here we are setting up the recruiting board. These are all the in-state players. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and combine it by who's interested in us. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at team needs. We need a running back. We need a center. We need a middle linebacker and two safeties. So let's go ahead and tackle out these team needs first. So it said we need a running back. We got a three-star, four-star interested. We need a middle linebacker. Got a three-star interested. We need both safeties. We got a four-star uh, free safety interested. Not bad. Then we have a four-star and a three-star strong safety. Now we're going to take a look at everybody out of state. Remember, three stars only. If anybody's, you know, if they're even remotely close, you know, if we, if they're even like anywhere near what we want, so. Nobody at the running back position really intrigues us. Luckily, we're in the state of Florida, so we got a lot of good recruits. We'll go after some of these uh, some of these centers. Moving on to middle linebacker. Anybody of real high value want to come to us? We're first on this dude's board. Number 11 linebacker in the country. No four stars interested in us at all. Okay. Moving on here to the safeties. Let's see. Six foot 177. We'll go, we'll go after this 6'4", 193 dude. And another 6'4". We're going to go after the tall, the big, physical, strong guys. Those are the guys we're going to go ahead and look at. You know what I mean? Because they might have the best physical tools. This dude is interested, but he's from Georgia. So, you know, even though he's a four-star, we can't go after him. Let's look for the big, physical, strong safeties. 6'1", 5'11". Here we go. 6'4", 202. Means he could probably hit. This dude's from Alabama. Let's see. This is number 44. That's number 16. We'll go after those dudes. Then we have a couple more spaces open for people in state that we want to go after that's interested in us. Ron Coleman, four star DN. We got two two four star DNs interested in us. Let's see what else. Have we got any other four stars? I don't think we necessarily need ends. We have plenty ends. I mean, we still have to worry about the quality of those ends, but for the most part, I think we'll be all right. We got a four star receiver, six three two zero eight interested. Doesn't they're not believed? He isn't believed to be that fast, but I think we'll be okay. And then we got a four-star athlete from Naples, Florida. And then we'll go up here and we'll we'll go after these two uh these two DNs as well. So we got 21 prospects on our board, and I think that should do. We're here at Red Shirt and Players. Uh I think all the freshmen we got, you know, are probably gonna come in and play day one. Fields is gonna start. Let's see. Harrison, we can go ahead and redshirt him. Our, our, our. All right, so here's where we have a bunch of true freshmen. We got John Brown. And we got Barnett Johnson. We're going to go ahead and uh, register those two left ends. The tackle, Dwayne Johnson. We need you on the field. We played a 4-3. Summer all is good. We're going to go ahead and uh, register Matt Young. 
red shirt Jesse Summers. No, Lyles could be uh, red shirted though. Moving on to safety, nobody's gonna be red shirted there. Nope, we're good. Now let's go over our depth chart. Of course, we already know who our QB one is. Like I said, John Fields is now the starting running back. Fullback doesn't really matter. Wide receiver Isaac's number one. We only have a 82 and then a 72. We only have two receivers 70 or above. Willie Bridges starting at tight end. You know, so let's see. Left left tackle, we got Horn. Thomas at left guard. Pitts at uh so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and throw Roland, our right tackle, our backup right tackle. We're gonna go ahead and throw him in at right guard for uh for Maxi. That way, you know, we got a little bit more substance. So we got a 62 overall here. Then we got a 66 left guard, 73 center, 70 right tackle, 74 right, 74 right, 72 right guard, 74 right tackle. Uh, let's see, left in. Can Zach Henderson start at left in? Yeah, he's carried Dupree's back up. He's going to go ahead and start over there. Oh, wrong person. Henderson, right in. Kerry Dupree did his thing there last year. Norris and Johnson starting at D tackle. Um, same linebackers are going to be holding it down the linebacker positions. Okay, so we got our uh, cornerback situated. Jesse Summers, true freshman, is going to go ahead and start, followed by Troy King, Taquan Young, and then Rick Wright. Free safety, of course, Marcus Brown starting there again. And strong safety, his brother, Sean Brown. Isaac is our number one returner once again this year. And then we're going to also put him at punt return as well. Now that our depth chart is set, what we're going to do here is we're, we're going to come here and, uh, you know, we're going to go ahead and get our schedule started. We're going to start off with a bang. We're going to play against Bama, but we're going to play them at home. We're not going to go on the road and play them. We're going to have them come down to South Beach. Clemson isn't that good, you know, you know, five years down the line. So we're going to go ahead and look for another good squad. Who else is ranked out here? We're trying to make statements, man. We're trying to play some of these good teams. We'll go ahead and play Michigan. We're going to make it difficult. We're not going to make it super duper easy, you know. We're going to give ourselves a little bit of challenge. We'll go ahead and play Kansas State. Remember, a lot of these teams may not be ranked by the time we play them. All right, guys, so this is the final schedule, A-plus schedule. We got Alabama first week, first game of the season, followed by Michigan. Then we got Boise State, both on the road. We come back home against Virginia Tech. Florida State, of course, is a rivalry game. Oregon State, Ole Miss, Houston, uh, Florida, you know, another rivalry game we got to keep. And then uh, we're going to keep UMass on the schedule. We got Georgia, then Mississippi State, and then we're going to end the season with two bye weeks. All right, guys, so uh, that's going to do it here for the preseason. We're going to go ahead and head into week one. We will simulate the week two. That way we'll see, you know, the um, the preseason recruit, I mean, preseason All-Americans and everything like that, where we're projected to finish the season. And, uh, yeah, man, we'll be, we'll be looking good. All right, guys, here we go. It says we have three preseason All-Americans and then 18 preseason All-Conference. We're not even going to look at that. We did not scout any of these players, but it says we have three busts and three gems. All right, so here we are looking at the preseason All-Americans. First team, Sean Brown is, is, going, is uh, a favorite to be an All-American at the end of the year at free safety, even though he plays strong. In his second team, they're saying Jay Top and the boy uh, Isaac Johnson. Any more here on the, on, the, on the second team? No. And then, you know... All independents, we're gonna have a bunch of preseason All Americans there. The Heisman watch list surprisingly has yours truly, Jay Tump, at the fifth spot. All five Heisman watch, all five preseason Heisman watch watch uh watchees, you know, are all quarterbacks. So uh, it's pretty much an honor to be up here, man. Uh, they think very very highly of your boy. And then uh, let's take a look at uh, championship contenders, what the the season's outlooks are. We come into this season ranked 85th. We're projected to be 107, 107, and then 86 and then 76. We've gotten better, 72 overall, 72 offense, 73 defense. Top 25 coming into the season, Bama, Texas, Ohio State, Virginia Tech, Michigan, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Mississippi State, Texas A&M, Oregon, Louisville, uh, Kansas State, Michigan State, Georgia Tech, Boise State, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Oregon State, Nebraska, Notre Dame, Boston College, Wisconsin, USC, and Georgia. All right, guys, so there was nothing I could do about this, so I guess for second season, we will be allowed to scout. Um, all these dudes came in scouted 100% after I simulated it here to this first week. Uh, I guess next time I have to set up my board, if I want to do it, set up my board when I actually get to the first week of the season. So my apologies. We know what all these dudes are, but these are the 17 dudes that, you know, stayed on our list. 
we're gonna go ahead and disperse all the points uh simulate to uh, week uh, to week number two and then we'll be uh pretty much done with this episode all right guys so all the points are dispersed evenly for the first week next week we'll see who we go up and down on and how we have to move accordingly but right now i think we have a big a pretty good chance of you know uh getting a few of these guys but remember we have 17 on our board we only have 15 scholarships next episode we will be taking on number one ranked bama uh you see here on paper they're way better than us but we moved up you know what i mean from d pluses to c's hope hopefully you know even maybe we might come out here and shock the world man but uh hopefully you guys did enjoy this episode if you did stop and smash that like button hit me up in the comment section below subscribe if you're new it's your boy uncle sam's reject i'm out of here peace